Well, good afternoon, everybody. You know what time it is. It's tea time with Miss Liz, and you know what that means. It means storytelling time and words, and we have a returning guest, and you know how Miss Liz loves returning guests. So today I have Gloria Peterson in the house, and we're going to be doing a different type of tea today. We're going to be double dipping. So we have two different types of teas that we're going to be serving, along with all the incredible updates, her new book, all of that good stuff. So before we get started, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. We're going to get you to ring that little doorbell so you can get notified when all these tea times are live. And you can join the live stream. If you have any questions, comments, or uh, support that you'd like to share, you can put that into the comment section. You can also see Miss Liz live streaming right now on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. So be sure to check out all of those platforms as well. If you have any questions or comments that you would like to ask Gloria and they are related to our conversation, we would be more than welcome to have those join us. If you'd like to stay anonymous and you would not like to know and share your name, you can also send me a private DM message on my Facebook page and I'll get those questions out to Gloria. So before we get started, let's do the disclaimer and a bio and let's get Gloria in here. And we're going to serve a double T and today's T is transforming exceptional abilities is the first T. And then the second T is training, empowering, and achieving. So and then we'll be talking about her book, The Art of Professional Connections, and the series, and all of the other good goodies. So let's get started with disclaimer and bio, and then we're going to get Gloria in here. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in, in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all regular tea times are hosted on a Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a tea time on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a special surprise or rescheduled tea time. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, Gloria Peterson is a returning guest. She's the founder and director of Global Pro Pro Protocol Academy LLC, is a seasonal speaker and trainer with over three decades of expertise in empowering individuals to navigate both professional and social scenar scenarios with confidence. Her dynamic presentations are designed to elevate your interaction while her liter liter literary work, in including mindfulness and health watch, your weekly inspired me journal, and the Art of Professional Connection series provides critical skills for your professional growth. Let me get Gloria in here and let's put some tea together. Welcome, Gloria. Thank you for inviting me. I, I love this. I love your show. Oh, well, thank you so much, Gloria. And we were in the background talking and getting and breaking the ice and getting some updates and all of that good stuff. So, Gloria, for anybody who hadn't seen you on the last season, let's share a little bit about who you are as a little girl and who you are now as a grown woman. Oh, who I was as a little girl? <laughs> yeah, we're going to go way back. <laughs> we are. Okay, you want a little history of my little girl days. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm the oldest of six. 
So when you're the old, oldest of six, you become a mom real fast at a very young age. And what I mean by that is my youngest sister was born when I was 13. And at that time, uh, my mother was kind of done with the whole raising baby things, diapering, bottling thing. And it was always Gloria, change Tammy, Gloria, feed Tammy. And I felt like a mom, you know, and sometimes I would get so angry at my little baby sister and I'd say, don't call her mom, call me mom. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, the story behind that really is it, it made me grow up maybe too fast. And I kind of resented that for a while because I really did grow up too fast because I had to take on such responsibilities at such a young age. But it also made me stronger. And I wouldn't realize that until, you know, way into my adult years, how that time in my life made me stronger today because I've had to totally take command of who I am and what I want to do. I had to totally take command of me. So those of you uh, as a child were raised with very, very supportive, loving, doting type of parents, be grateful. <laughs> be really grateful. I love my parents. And, you know, they passed in the past few years, but I would say that uh, when I moved from Illinois to Arizona, where they are now were uh, and I had to start taking care of them as they both went into their dementia time um, I got to know them there's you know when they moved to Arizona in 69 and I didn't come out here until 2007 I did not have but a week of vacation contact with them during that time so um, I had to start all over getting to know my parents they had to start all over getting to know their oldest daughter so as a child, uh, just saying it again, I just grew up too fast, but it made me stronger as a result. So you have to look at, I regret I grew up too fast, but I'm happy it made me stronger. Does that make sense? It does, right? Because we need the balance, right? We need, yeah. we need the ups and the downs. And growing up fast gave you that strength to be who you are today as an individual, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, Gloria, I want to talk about these double T's because when you gave me two T's, you were like, oh, can we do two T's? Absolutely. We can do three. We can do four, right? <laughs> um, so when I when I reached out and, and connected with you again, I wanted to know where you, where you were since the last time you were on um, and the growth. And when you were on last time, you were talking about a new book. Um, so the new book that you just released is a mindful one and health work, right? Part it's series. a journal. Yeah, it's a journal. Um, I'll just back you up if you don't mind. Back you up a little bit. No, no, no. Um, we can go okay. way back. <laughs> okay, we can go way back because I, I really want people to respect the forks in the road. And when things happen that are devastating, you lose your job, or you lose this or whatever. It, it it if you really take command of you, it's really a time. And if I can use the word universe, uh, the universe yeah. is saying, okay, we need to do some rerouting here. And what's really happening, and you don't realize it at the time, is you're being rerouted. And we are all gifted with this thing called curiosity within us. And I think some of us take it too much for granted. And when you're curious about something, check it out. Just really go with it. And that doesn't mean uh, check with your mom and dad, check with your siblings, check with your friends, check with your coworkers, because they're going to have different points of view. And they might not be in a line with yours. But if you have a feeling for something, a real feeling for something, and you find they're starting to say, oh, no, no, you don't want to do that. There's no money in that. There's no this and that. Don't listen. Listen to you. It's good to get input and get some guidance from that. But bottom line is you have to listen to you because I, I did not listen to me when I was getting all the naysayers. When I was getting all of that, I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation with you. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. And I spent 16 years in a corporate world. And I thought that's all I was supposed to do because women back then, especially back in my day, in my generation, we were supposed to get married, have babies, raise kids, work as a secretary. It didn't matter if you had a degree or not, you were a secretary. <laughs> Some of you are going to be able to relate to that. A stenographer, and that's a word that you probably have never heard before. <laughs> um, but I worked for a company in the contracts department, and I was administrative assistant there. And I thought that's all I was destined to do until I got the fork in the road. The company was downsizing. Pink slips were being issued. I was um, safe as long as my manager did not leave. If he left, then the department would be dissolved. He left. The department was dissolved. And... Um, 
and I'm going to tell you the story because there's a little grit here that I did not know you had. There are going to be things going on in your life where you have an opportunity to find your own grit. And I can't stress that enough. Let it happen. Just let it happen because I didn't know then what I had. And this was a very male dominated company where if you were a woman with a degree, it didn't matter what your education was. You were a secretary, stenographer, administrative assistant. That was it. Uh, the men, quote, the men um, were the sales and marketing team. And the men were the managers. And the men were et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of people in my generation are going to know what I'm talking about. Well, they had a Dale Carnegie course. They, they were giving all the sales and marketing people. And it was free. The company would pay for it. I think back in that time, it was like $350 for 13 weeks of it. Well, I said, well, if you're going to pink slip me out of here, I want to take that course. I had no idea what it was. I just had this feeling, this feeling that I was supposed to take that course. But I didn't know what it was about. I had no clue. And I went to HR and they said, no, you're, <laughs> they didn't say you're a woman, but they said, no. I thought, huh? Well, don't tell me no. <laughs> when I want to do something bad enough, don't tell, yeah, don't me tell no. Gloria no. Just come in. <laughs> <laughs> and they said no. And so I, I got I, I went back to my desk a little bit dumbfounded. And I decided, well, I'm gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna go out there and ask them again. They said no again. And then, but the second time I asked the magic question, because this all leads to where I am today. The second question was, well, what would it take for me to take the course? And that's what I'm gonna tell all of you do. When you're to, when you're told no, just say, well, what will it take for me to be able to take the course? And they said, well, you'll have to have your um, man, your vice president, the vice president of your department, your, the, a, a vice president signature. Okay. Well, they didn't say which one. And the, my VP absolutely would not sign it. He was not pro women in any way, shape, or form. They were to know their place. That was my VP. However, I was sitting at lunch one day and this VP went by who was the number one VP. He was number one. And his last name was Lewis. And I thought, hmm, Lewis. I went to high school with a Steve Lewis. I wonder if that's his son. And I've done a lot of volunteer work at the YWCA and they have a, 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 a Lewis on their board. I wonder if that's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> small world right <laughs> so as he's getting ready and he always toured the engineering department during the lunchtime because he liked he liked to get to know his engineers he was just really social in that way so he walked by my desk and i said mr lewis well you know what happens to yourself when that happens your heart's going boom 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 and you're thinking your blouse is going like this <laughs> and mine was doing that i was almost embarrassed at myself <laughs> knowing how that movement was going on and he stopped by and he says, yes, Ms. Peters, uh, uh, was I Peterson yet? No, I wasn't Peterson yet, Ms. Ham. <laughs> he says, what mm -hmm. can I do for you? And I said, um, by any chance is your son Steve Lewis? Well, yes. How do you know my son? I Well, we were in the same graduating class. How is he doing now? Is he at Yale? Of course he's at Yale. <laughs> How else would he be? And then I said, and I noticed on the uh, board of directors at the Y, there's a woman by the last name of Lewis. Is, would you know her? Well, that's my wife. I'm all for women. You women getting ahead. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and he says, where are you going with this? He finally gets serious with me. Where are you going with this? And I said, well, I've got this document right here and I want to take this Dale Carnegie course. And I asked HR and they just simply said I needed a vice president signature. See, he was my boss's boss. That's ah. how I went. He was my boss's boss. And he says, well, of course. You want us to take it? Improve yourself? Better yourself? Of course you can take it. He signed it. And I took it back to HR. And I wasn't, you know, Ms. Liz, I wasn't doing any breakthrough the glass ceiling thing. And this was in the early 80s, everyone, if you're trying to figure out the timeline. It was the 80s. And I, I wasn't thinking in terms of breaking through the glass ceiling and women's movement. That wasn't in my head. What was in my head was something for me that the company would pay for something, some educational piece that might be helpful to me as I move on to something else. And of course, they were a little bit dumbfounded because I had to take it. But you know what? That opened door. When I got to take that course, it opened doors to other women there. Well, if Gloria can, you know, why can't we? It just really opened doors. But long story short, because this is transitional time, this is fork in the road time. 
okay? And I took the course. I didn't know it was about speaking. Well, in high school and college, I got A's in speech class. And I just thought it was just one of those easy classes to take just to get a good credit. I had no idea that was my gift. And I went through the 13 weeks and we had these um, big dinners afterwards and celebrations. And I thought for sure, I'm going to get Miss Congeniality. I know I'm going to get that one. I didn't. And then when he went through the alphabet, my, oh, my name was Peterson then, come to think of it. Okay. <laughs> and he got to the P's and he skipped my name and he was on the T's. And I thought, wait a minute, A, B, C, D, E. I'm actually... Um, going to the alphabet thinking, I know, P comes before S, T. And, and then at the end, he says, I saved one certificate for last for a reason. And he said, Gloria Peterson, would you stand up and come up here, please? And I, I thought, uh oh, what did I do now? And he says, you <laughs> are the only one. I never forgot these words. They're life changing. Think about things people say to you that are life changing. You are the only one that didn't need to be here. You just didn't know it. And everybody applauded. And I thought, huh? Mm. I know. And he says, um, I'll explain to you later. And I, th I just thought, what? So when I we had a sidebar conversation later after everybody left, he says, Gloria, you have a gift. People are, uh, companies are paying thousands of dollars for people to take the Dale Carnegie course to get over this fear of getting fun for a group of people and speak. But you love it. You get up there and you absolutely love it, except if we give you a topic and you didn't get to plan for it or prepare for it, then you don't like it anymore. No, I don't want to be unprepared. I don't like it when you, because sometimes they do the, the um, impromptu topics. And I didn't like those. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't, didn't get a chance to research it and think it through. Um, and he says, so I'm going to recommend that you get in front of groups, uh, uh, do fundraisers, uh, volunteer to commentate fundraisers volunteer to speak at this just volunteer for whatever you can so that you can recognize this gift that you have number one number two find your passion what is it you're passionate about what is it that just makes you get so excited in the morning you can't wait to share it with everybody and then you've got and i did and that's why i'm in the industry I, i'm in right now because i loved helping people back then women dress professionally so the dress for success thing was going on back then. It was a fit for me. It, it was easy for me. And then the other turning point, and again, I give you these turning points because I want you to think about your own life in the process. The other turning point was I was doing all these programs quote free because I loved it. It was fun and I was good at it. And then I had a bank contact me and want to know if I would do a dress for success program for their staff. Well, of course, because um, somebody saw me do I, I did YWCA workshops on it, and someone was in my group at that time. So I did it for him, free. And then he sent me a letter, and he said, Dear Ms. Peterson, let me be the first to give you a check. You need to be paid for what you're doing. You're good. And he gave me a $100 check. And I wish I had made a copy of it because I didn't know I could get paid. Back then, that was a lot of money for me. Okay. And um, I, those are the moments you want to hold on to, right? I wish I'd made a photograph. I was so excited. I opened a bank account and, I, and then I went to the bank to get a loan and they says, no, <laughs> there's no track record. There's no this, there's no that. So I had to use my savings. I used whatever I could. And so I started out with, um, and let me rephrase that, what was also evolving at the same time. And you know, when you, when you get those forks in the road, pay attention to perfect timing. What is going on out there that just happened to happen at the same time that was happening to you? And mine was John Malloy wrote a book called Dress for Success. And Carol Jackson came out with a book called Color Me Beautiful. Well, in high school, I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer. So was that a sure fit for me? Yeah. When I was working at this company, whenever there was an issue with the way uh, someone was dressing or their makeup, I was in HR. But I would, they would always come to me and say, can you talk to Edna? Her, she's really doing a lot of blue shadow lately. We kind of like to lighten it up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, Edna. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, back in the 80s, the blue, went, the blue was the in thing, right? Her eyeshadow. Oh, but she overdid. I mean, she really did the blue. <laughs> All the way up to her eyebrows. <laughs> oh, wow. And, 
or else they might say, would you kind of drop a hint to this other person? She's dressed a little bit too sexy for the office. I mean, I would get those things and I think, why are you guys asking me to do this? And, but I would. And then I thought, oh, that's why I was getting asked. The universe told me I'm supposed to um, start doing this a little bit when I was in a different environment. But anyway, moving on. Um, so I started doing dress for success programs. I did color analysis. I did body line. I started doing workshops in that area. Then I thought, well, you know, you can be dressed for success, but if you don't know how to behave properly or handle yourself properly, and I wanted to make sure I was handling me properly too. So it was not just for everybody else. And I saw an article in, um, and there was no degree in this. There was no education in it. I had to find the certification that was available. That's all there was. So there's the Professional Image Institute in Atlanta that I found in the Wall Street Journal, which I subscribed to at that time. When I wanted, I want to have my own business. So if I'm going to have my own business, I better subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. But there's <laughs> so a time and place for everything, right, Gloria? Like we were talking yeah. before we went live, right? Yeah. The universe yeah. opens these doors and brings us these challenges in life where we're just like, why now? Like. And, and it brings your attention to something that you would not have others otherwise read or noticed. Does that Absolutely. make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And I saw this in a journal and I thought, well, that makes sense. I'll go there. I already know most of what she's going to teach, but I just want a certification that says I know what I know. <laughs> yeah. And I did go, but she did introduce me. It was all about dressing professionally, you know, and um, image work is professional image work. But there was a segment on etiquette, business etiquette. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So then I saw an article in the journal with the Protocol School of Washington, D.C., which was also, quote, brand new at the time. And I thought, well, I'm going to go to that and now get a credential for me. So to make sure I know my protocol and etiquette skill sets as I go out there and try to wander as a business owner, wander out there as a business owner. But then I'll teach it to others. Once I learn it, then I need to teach it to others. And that's yeah. how I am. I want to learn so I can teach others. And so that's how it all evolved. That's how the uh, professional image, business etiquette, and protocol of my life's work evolved in 1985, moving forward. And in 210, I shared this with Miss Liz earlier, uh, for those of you who are dealing with something called cancer, um, I was uh, healthy, vibrant, you know, everything, it took very good care of myself. And all of a sudden, it was January 210, I received these excruciating pains that were unbearable. I was getting ready for a seven course wine dinner at Ganey Ranch here in Scottsdale. And I got out of the shower and I keeled over. And my cousin had to take me to, you know, uh, urgent care who sent me to ER. And half hour later, I wouldn't have made it. I had a carcinoid cancer tumor. And they're slow growing tumors. It took residents by my colon, slow growing. They figured it was about seven years in the making. And it was getting ready to shut me down. I had no idea. I have no idea where that came. No history of it in my family, by the way. No one's even heard of it, you know. So while I was in the hospital, um, I thought, you know, I was going to be there for a week and I was getting restless and bored. And I thought, you know what? If I had died, all that knowledge, all that experience, all that I know would be gone. Yeah. Poof. So I told my daughter, I asked them if they could take this one morphine button off my finger, which would, would automatically give me morphine as I need it. And I says, I need this finger because I want my daughter to bring me my laptop. And they says, well, you'll feel more pain. That's all right. I need my laptop more than I need to worry about pain. I mean, yeah. I didn't care. I wanted my laptop. So while I was in the hospital, I wrote the chapters to this book. Well, they said it kept my mind. But the, the healthy part of that is it kept my mind busy. Yeah, because if you don't keep your if you have something like that going on and if you don't um, uh, occupy your mind with something positive, something you can develop, create, uh, then you start woe with me, woe with me and start feeling sorry for you and woe with me with everybody else. I didn't want to do that. So yeah. I started writing the chapters. So when I got out of the hospital, I just continued and I got go, got on a roll. And so 211, I pub published it. I, I Hybrid publishing is the route I took for those of you who are interested in how I did it, went about hybrid publishing. And then I wrote one on networking and wrote one on dining skills and wrote one on event planning. So I, I was the protocol advisor to Motorola for the Olympics when they were here back then. 
and I wanted to write that experience. So I started writing these books. So that's how that journey started. And now we're probably heading for your phase two of this segment. So we have a comment here from one of our listeners, uh, from Bruce Lee. He's Mrs. Peterson. You are an inspiration. Wow. And this is why we we do these tea times, right? And we share these stories because yeah. stories matter, you know, and they, and they encourage other people to share their stories as well. And me and Gloria, before we went live, we were talking about your cancer and that. And, you know, uh, life brings us these challenges. And sometimes what we can't control, we just have to go with the flow, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but we try to control what we can. And that's exactly what you did when you were in the hospital is you, you had the control to take that off of your finger and deal with the pain. And, and, and it is true. We need to get our minds busy because then it's the poor me or what could I have done? Woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, get your mind busy, get it done. Uh, I had a guest on last week, Joyce, and she said, let's get those books that are under our bed published. You know, yeah. we write these books and then we pass away and the books are found later and we're not getting them out there, you know, where you took that step, Gloria, and you and you said, look, I want to get it out there. I want my words and my knowledge to be known if anything should happen. Um, well, if I had not made it, my daughter would have buried me with my laptop. <laughs> Right. Like, you know, but today you've written five books with that series. Yeah. It, it's for that particular series. There's four. The number five is a little different. That's that's our little. Oh, okay. here. We're going to do a okay. U-turn there. We're going to go on a different point. <laughs> oh, oh, totally, totally, totally different one. <laughs> and and before I leave that, though, I thought of my book in 210 in January when I was doing those chapters, I was writing my legacy. So if you have a book in you under your bed, wherever it is, and you think this information about the experiences you've had in your life or the knowledge that you've acquired during your career is valuable enough to share, then put it in writing into a book so it can live on. It only lives on if you write it and you record it. And publishing today is, is much easier than it used to be. And as far as how much is it going to cost? Well, that depends upon you, you know, how much you want to put into it. And so, uh, so I'll set that there. So now I'm going to do another uh, fork in the road, if you will. Uh, I was, I'm going to call this fork. Yeah, it is a fork. It's called COVID. It's a COVID fork. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when COVID hit, okay, now I'm a speaker. I'm a trainer, seminar leader. You know, I get hired to be the breakout session at conventions and uh, symposiums and things like that, or companies bring me into their a training room to do corporate training like Caterpillar, uh, Toyota, those are the kind of companies I did training with. And Kova says no. Kova said no. Can't go anywhere. So I thought, and can't make money, can't can't do anything. You're kind of stuck. And I think the worst thing you can do when a pandemic hits like that or something happens and you're stuck uh, is to woe with me. Don't go there. There's so much to, more to you than woe with me. So I decided to do some reflecting. And I reflected on all those decades that I had done seminars for all these companies. And I was even going through my thank you notes and my endorsements, and my um, uh, testimonials and thinking, you know what? These are good. I was good. <laughs> I can't give that up. But then I thought about something and I was dealing with a lot of my own issues, personal issues at that time that were in playing interference in career. And a lot of times personal stuff plays interference with your career. And I'll give you two of mine, just so you know, obviously uh, the cancer's one, this cancer, I, obviously I survived it. It went into remission, but with carcinoid cancer, for those of you who are familiar with it or maybe not familiar with it, it's not an organ cancer. It's a, it's a cancer that takes residence by an organ, and when it matures, it shuts the organ down. So it's very different. It's not chemo or, or a radiation uh, candidate. It has to, be, has to be surgically removed if it's by an organ where that's safe enough to do. Okay? And it can come back after 10 years. And I recently learned that mine did. And it's not by the colon anymore. It's by the liver. But as long as it doesn't change shape, sizes, it just stays the way it is right now, I'm fine. But during COVID, I'm, I'm reflecting on a lot of things. And I thought, you know what? And the other thing that was going on in my life was my marriage with my, I'm remarried about 10, I, let's say, put it this way. I was married for 21 years 
I was divorced for 23 and I lived totally on my own by myself all 23 years. Right. And then this guy came along that wouldn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, those boys, eh? <laughs> I know. I married him 10 years ago. And I was wife number five. Red flag. Red flag. And it was falling apart because all of a sudden I was finding out from him during that time that he no longer wanted to stay in this marriage. He wanted to move on again. I thought, oh, you know. So I thought, okay, I'm going to reflect a little bit. So I sat down. And it's interesting when you go on YouTube, because it, I heard about this. I went to this luncheon, and it was just before COVID hit, January 20. That was my fork in the road luncheon. It was called the Global Women's Peace Network Luncheon. I was invited as a guest. And as we left, we were given this, this journal. Now, I've done the journaling, was just blank pages, and you put woe with me all over the place. Every page is about the woe with me in my life. You know, devastating things that were happening, sad things, you know, it's kind of things that you, you just try to get it from here to here so you don't have to think about it. Okay. And it was called The Gratitude Diary by Melanie Spears in Australia. I didn't know how to think like that. I didn't know I was supposed to be reciting gratefulness. I didn't understand. I didn't get it. But I thought, and even though mindfulness and gratitude had been around for a while, it was now a movement. It was getting a lot more attention. It caught my attention. And I thought, well, I like this way of thinking. Think in terms of what I'm grateful for, not so much about what's not working. And so I went on YouTube and I just put in mindfulness. Well, you know, when you're on YouTube, you put in something, then they give you a whole bunch more of other stuff. So I might put in gratitude and I start listening to look, look, try to learn a little bit more about how to be grateful. Then intention pops up. Oh, intention. So then I read what's intention and then affirmation pops up. And I thought, and then inspiration pops up. Then visualization pops I mean, it just, get, these things kept popping and I kept watching them. And then it got to the point where by the time I'm done watching all these things and filling my mind with these different ways of thinking, um, COVID was starting to let up. And I went to Barnes and Noble and I sat Indian style on the floor in their uh, journal department. And they had the journals that were blank pages over there. And they had the journal type workbooks over there. Why they were separated, I don't know. And I sat down. I says, well, I made a list of about seven things that I had, I had watched on YouTube. And there was like intention, gratitude, affirmation, um, visualization, kindness, wisdom, spirituality, all those things, mindfulness. And I wanted one book to help me with all those things. I want them all in one book. Did it exist? No. Uh, gratitude? Yeah. Mindfulness? Yeah. But not those other five things. So I decided, well, I'll write one. If you, there you go, right? <laughs> if you can't find it, you write it. <laughs> so then I sat down and started creating because, uh, you know, it was still, uh, even though we were coming out of COVID, work wasn't happening. Uh, companies were not bringing back their um, uh, intern programs because my claim to fame when I was very active out there was intern programs. I was very good with intern programs and I would be hired for those. And, the, and that was going to be a, uh, a slow comeback. So then I wrote it down. And then the other thing I want to share with everyone, because I think this is important. Um, I was starting to do, let me rephrase that. My parents were, my mother first into dementia and I'm trying to help her. So I know the symptoms. Then my dad starts going into it and I'm trying to help him. Again, I'm knowing the symptoms. Then all of a sudden I think I've got the symptoms. I start scaring me. I'm driving and I'm taking left turns instead of right. I'm making st stupid, stupid mistakes. I'm forgetting things. I'm saying something, but I really meant to say that. The word that came out of my mouth was not the word I was thinking, if that's making sense to anyone. Yeah. Okay. And so I went to my doctor and I said, I want a brain scan. I've never had one. I want to know what's going on up here. Something's going on. And I was scared to death to um, be told I was in the early stages of dementia. Scared. And so they said, well, we have to give you a dementia test. Well, I intentionally failed it because I wanted the scan. You have to fail it to get the scan. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at you. You had the inside scoop. I know if I fail this, I'm getting that test. <laughs> well, it's hard to do because it's like an insult to yourself, but you knew that if you did well on it, they wouldn't do the scan. They would be like, there's nothing wrong. We don't need to do yeah, that. Yeah. So anyway, they did the brain scan, but you know what they found? That someplace in here, I had a stroke scar. And as a result of the stroke scar, I had permanent memory loss. And what I'm going to say to all of you out there, what that means is I can look at a photo album of my kids, my family, and not remember being there and oh. not recognize the environment and not recognize anything about that scene whatsoever. And that was scaring me, too. I knew that. But now I understood it. And so um, they figured uh, the scar happened when I I won't go into details on this list. This is a whole different ball game. But in okay. 2004, I was the victim of a census act of violence where I almost lost my life in a, in a department store where I caught somebody stealing something, tried to stop it. That's, I'll, that's all I'll say about that right now. But um, we, figured, we figured I probably had a, a mini stroke at the time I was going through all that. Okay. Oh. And so um, the doctor sent me to a neurologist. The neurologist puts all these things on you, monitors. Then the neurologist sends you to a cardiologist, and you're you're doing this triage, <laughs> if you will. And finally, when all this got done, I said to my cardiologist because I wasn't happy with what the neurologist was coming up with. I just something inside me was disagreeing with him, even though I'm not the doctor, he is. But I know my body, I know me, and the cardiologist was making more sense. And so what they did find is I have an artery back here that's partially blocked. Now, this is what the neur neurologist found. And it's interfering with blood, uh, blood and oxygen flow to my brain. If you aren't getting the amount of oxygen and blood flow to your brain that you need, you're going to have dementia-like symptoms. Even though it might not be dementia, but you're going to have the, the, the forgetfulness. And he said, I said, well, do we need medicine? Do I need surgery? What do I need to correct the problem? And I'll never forget his words. It's not, I keep looking at my watch, make sure we have enough time. Um, it's not significant enough for a procedure. Huh? What do you well, you mean gotta get clever again. Gloria, you gotta get clever again. <laughs> Play the system. <laughs> it's not significant enough for a procedure. In other words, just deal with it. No, 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 no. So I went to my cardiologist and I told him what the neurologist said. <laughs> and he says, yes, Gloria, there is something you can do. Yes. He said, first of all, he had me wearing uh, compression socks. For those of you, those are bare to get on and off. Oh, but he I said, those you things. Do. <laughs> yeah, I know. But he said, you, I said, and I finally, you know, I said, well, we did those for a while, but they're so hard to get on, especially if you have arthritis in your hands. It's really challenging. And he said, okay, you're going to need to force it. And that's why I wrote, this was the bottom line. This is why I finally wrote this book. He said, you need to force the blood flow and oxygen to your brain through that path that's narrow. And I said, how? And he says, brisk walk, minimum 30 minutes a day, and you will be forcing it. You, we take for granted walking, but oh my God, it's therapeutic. So my son bought me a smartwatch for Christmas to help me with my discipline. And the smartwatch basically says that if I walk briskly 6,000 steps a day, I accomplish that. And the cardiologist agreed, a minimum, but eight or 10 is better. Yeah. So I did that. So in this book, when I wrote it, um, I'm just showing you right here, I actually put a box up here to force you, the reader of the journal, the user of the journal, to do the same thing. Because it would ask you, because you have to compete with yourself. Exactly. You have to discipline that's yourself. That's exactly where we need to get out there, Gloria. Yeah. Is they yeah. Need you need to you need to. Work. So I'm asking you. So I took and all those seven elements, and I put them in the book, and I said, okay, it'd be great if you can do all seven a day, but maybe if you focus on one, like maybe Monday's yeah. your intention day, maybe Tuesday's your gratitude day, maybe Wednesday's your affirmation day, but focus on one. Watch a, a YouTube video on it. Learn about it. Learn how to use it. Learn how to recite it. Learn how to integrate it into your way of thinking. You have to rewire your brain, basically. And then at the end of the day, um, look at your watch. Write down how many steps. And sometimes maybe I didn't do the steps, but I did some Zumba. I love Zumba. So I'll put, I did Zumba today. 
or I did free weights today, but I, I write something down because if, if I don't write it down and record it, then I'll let three or four days go by and not do it. Yeah. So I decided to do a journal that's very different. And uh, it, if it's going to force me and I use my own journal, yeah, absolutely. I wanted to help others with their life as well. So, you know, as we do in e dementia is something for elderly people. Trust me, young people are going through it, too. And it, for different reasons, it can come into your life. But there is something you can do about it. And it comes it comes with two things. It's the way you you engineer your mind to think. And sometimes we have to rework it so that we think positively and not negatively so we don't do woe with me we do wow with me and you have to train your mind to do that and sometimes a book helps you do that so that's why i wrote the book so the book was to help me help you and i do it i don't i just didn't write the book and just put it aside no and this one I, i'm not going to write anymore i wrote two 223 this is the 224 and the reason is this one is goes from 224, 225, 226, et cetera, all the way to 229. You just check the box of which that journal is going to be used for. And that's right? so that if you start like March, you can start March 224 and go all the way to March 225. And I didn't want anyone to think that they had to wait to the first of the year to start. That's, that was my, my thinking. So they wouldn't have to do that. So, um, and yes, I'm dealing with stuff. I'm dealing with the cancer is back, but it's sitting there dormant. But it doesn't mean it will stay that way. But it's, but I'm going to tell it it has to stay that way. Okay. You just want it I'm to sit. You don't want it to move. Like we don't want yeah. the numbers changing. I'm dealing with divorce. It is what it is. This is supposed to be the rest of my life. I was looking forward to my 25th anniversary at age 94, or whatever it is. And I married somebody who just doesn't like to stay married. And I knew that when I married him. I took a risk. I took a chance. But you know what? There's a lot about this marriage that I'm grateful for moving forward. Yeah. And then I'm just going to be reinventing my life again <laughs> and reworking it. And I, one of my plans is to move from the Phoenix area to I'm looking at North Carolina. Oh, well, look at you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've never been there. And somebody, some will say, how can you think about moving someplace you've never been? No, I don't have family there. I have a son in Vienna, about four hours away, Vienna, Virginia. Um, no, because uh, I feel like the universe is, is putting me in that direction. Things have happened. Like, again, I'm going to ask you not to take things for granted and certainly have Liz and Jess and just inject some of her thoughts into this. But um, when you're trying to think about where I should go and you turn on a movie on Netflix and it takes place in North Carolina. OK, then you think nothing of it. Well, this is North Carolina. I see the scenery, see the trees that you kind of look at from that point of view. And the next time you turn on a movie on Netflix, as another one, North Carolina. It's, it's going, telling you minute. something. It, the universe yeah. tells us stuff, right? When we listen. And, and I tell this all the time on Tea Time, right? Our yeah. teas tell us different things, yeah. different journeys, different adventures, taking us onto a, a fork in the road that we would have never thought we needed to take. And I love that you kept saying the fork, you know, the fork in the yeah. road. There are so many different forks in the road. You can go left, you can go right, you can go straight, but you got to take those actions. You have yeah. to take those steps. And we talked about this before we went live, Gloria, is things in our personal life affect our business lives, you know? And sometimes the personal life is giving us a message that the business yeah. is not right for us and we have to change direction, uh, you know? Um, and like we talked about before we went live as well is building relationships, building those connections, you know? Have those long and lasting uh, avenues so that you can reach out and say, you know what, I'm having a rough day, but I think just you're the person I need to talk to today. Uh, you know, and that's the legacy that I'm hoping that I'm leaving behind with all of these tea times is that my guests can come and say, you know what, Miss Liz, I need a cup of tea with you today. But it doesn't need to be a podcast interview. It just needs to be, can I call you at two in the morning and let's just sit and chit chat, you know? Uh, I want to be there for, for all of you guys. Um, and Glory, like when we when you when we reconnected, it was like, uh, Gloria, I want to have a couple of my guests come back. And right away, you were like, yeah, absolutely. Put me on the list. Let, let's do this again. Um, you know, 
And I find that you inspire me to stay strong as well, because we both have our own journeys that we're going on personal and business wise. Mm -hmm. And we're like 2024. It's enough. <laughs> you know, we want 2025. But well, one of the things I'm just going to inject this real quick. If I apologize for interrupting. Um, before I forget, I had to, I forget. I might no, no, forget. that's okay. You know Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I was, when I was doing the journaling thing, I sat there and I thought, oh my God, I did this backwards. Everybody out there, you're doing things backwards. And when I say that, if you don't have your mind in the right place before you try to learn a skill, you don't learn it as well as you could have or should have. So then I thought I should have done this, the journal, before I wrote the four books. Because by starting out, and even in seminars when I do them now, and I did one last week, um, I start out with some mindfulness in the beginning. Then we go into the skill sets and develop them. But we close with some mindfulness at the end. And because I think that's so important. That's the bookends. Those are the bookends of your life. You have to start your day with some mindfulness thinking, then end your day with some mindfulness thinking, and you will feel healthier and happier, and you will smile when all this stuff is going on, you'll smile. The other thing in the signs, um, I reached out to an author friend of mine who, quote, I thought he was living in Scottsdale, because uh, I am part of an author community, and he was one of the guests on my show. It was like my kind of podcast, but through another organization. And uh, he wrote a book that I found very, very inspiring. There was uh, something I highlighted in it. And I was going to call him to share how that touched me. And I says, can we meet for coffee, Mike? He goes, well, Gloria, I don't live in Scottsdale anymore. Oh, where'd you go? I'm in Cary. You know, guess what state? North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> You're always going to say, don't say North Carolina. And then this week, I'm also a successor trustee of my dad's estate. So I did lose my dad last year. So I had meet with the attorney last Tuesday to go over how to close out the estate and my responsibilities with the accountant and all that. And I'm talking to Joshua, who is the legal aide at the desk up there. And I says, well, Joshua, I don't know if I'll see you again because I've known him for years because my dad. I don't know if I'm going to see you again or not because I think after the first year when the divorce is final and the house is sold and I'm going to be moving, I'm going to Cary, Indiana. Guess where he's from? North Ca Carolina. Not Cary, Indiana. Cary in North Carolina. Guess where he's from? North Carolina. Cary, North Carolina. Guess what he brought See, out? It's calling me. you. Gloria, it's a, it's a, it's a gotta do. Like everything is directing you to North Carolina. Yeah. I'm just trying to struggle to find something here. Oh, and guess what he gave me? Oh, well, look at that. Look what he gave me. Um, no, I don't think I magnet? need any more signs. Right? <laughs> the, the universe is screaming at you. North I know. <laughs> I thought, all right, universe, I got it. <laughs> you but you just have to listen. You, you have to pay attention. Yeah. So somebody could have just given this to me and I could have, oh, that's nice. It's cute. But I thought, no, wait a minute. That's telling me something. There's a message there. I, I at you me, know when don't, in, in, in life that's what happens right and Gloria things happen to us and we're just like why does it keep tapping me it's like my oma my oma keeps tapping me t t t t okay I got it you want me to give tea like you know but if we don't listen to what the messages are coming we're missing opportunities we're missing those forks in the roads we're missing and you know connections uh relationships we're missing you know that chance in a lifetime that might take us on a path that we might have not ever known had we not listened to that sign. And, and I think 2024 is giving me and you both signs, right? That it's, yeah. it's time for a move. It's time for a change. And uh, you just never know where it's going to take us, uh, you know, and it's going to be scary, but we both are, we both can do this. And Gloria, I really hope that you stay strong. Like you're an amazing person. Um, I'm honored to know you and to get to know you even more. Uh, and I'd love to know once you moved to North Carolina, how it went and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, as you were sharing your stories this afternoon with us, you were sharing all of the reasoning behind the words that you gave me for the tease as well. The transforming, the empowering, uh, you know, the achieving, achieving, you know, asking, how can I get there? How can I do this? Like right at the beginning when you were sharing in, in corporate, you know, if you don't ask, you don't know. Um, 
And then you gave me uh, exceptional, well, exceptional life. Like, come on, like you lived an exceptional life. You've been married five times and look, and now you're moving to North Carolina. No, no, me too. Me too. He oh, has two, five. oh, two times. You're, no, you're the, okay. The husband has, I'm the not, husband I'm has wife five times. Five. <laughs> He's husband number two. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you were only married a couple of times. Yeah. Um, you well, know, my first then, husband, my first husband passed away. And then and you gave me the word abilities. I want to get into the word abilities. Uh, share a little bit with my audience why you gave me that word abilities. Say that again. Oh, did, did I freeze? Yeah, it glitched and I didn't quite catch it. Oh, well, we got glitches in the house. Uh, so you gave me the word abilities. We really didn't get into abilities. So let's get into that a little bit. We still have a couple minutes here before we wrap up. So why'd you give me that word abilities, Gloria? Yeah, because we all have unique abilities within us that we were gifted with. And to try to copy somebody else's ability is not who we are. I think you have to really reach into yourself, find out what that natural gift that you have. We all have them. We just have to figure out what they are. And sometimes those forks in the road, sometimes that that uh, feeling of curiosity is a way of trying to get you to real think of you to think differently about your abilities because they're there. You are unique for a reason. And um, just to share that back in the 1980s when I was struggling with a lot of stuff because of making all these changes and and neighbors and friends were just arguing with me or making me feel less. I had a girlfriend, a new friend at that time. She says, Gloria, don't ever change. You're unique. And you're, everyone is unique in their own ability. I never forgot her words. She gave me permission to be unique. And by being unique, I got to really tap into what my abilities were as I try to get others to tap into theirs. I, I think it's important, you know, that we give that little push, right? That little encouragement, uh, you know, and sometimes the outside sees a little bit to give us that encouragement to move on. You know, where they, I see this in you, Gloria, but, you know, maybe you're not paying attention to it. You know, like North Carolina, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and also I asked you to give me a word to describe yourself, Gloria, and you gave me the word Epherson. Epidescent. And I gave you that word epidescent because back when, back in the day when I was, I was trying to figure out my life as a uh, professional presence, etiquette and protocol person, trying to figure out what gives me the right to, to train on these kinds of things. I'd hired this uh, PR person who was doing my, what they call a one sheet. And she was doing descriptions about me. And she says, and in that description, she had the word epidescent. And I thought, huh? What's an epidescent? <laughs> yeah, because when you sent it to me, I had to go Google it. I was like, what the heck is it's this? It's bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> this means joyful. It means you're bubbly. It means you have energy. Then I thought, oh, I like that word after all. <laughs> yeah, I just loved it because when you gave it to me, I was like, well, what? what? Oh, she's going to make me do my homework, right? <laughs> Here we go. We got to go and no, look. Recognize your epidescence. Find your epidescence. Yeah. It's there. And well, bring it out more. Let people experience it. Let people have fun with your epidescence. I, I, I love it, right? Say, say You can't say that word without smiling, right? Like, And <laughs> we were talking about that before we went live with smiling. You know, in life, we get hit with so much that all we can do is just smile. You know, and people ask us, why are you smiling for? Like, you're going through a divorce. You're going through cancer. You're going through, yeah. the, you know. Uh, and But the smile is just our strength to keep going and keep pushing on. Uh, Gloria, what final message would you like to leave everybody with today about being professional, connecting, relationships, all of that good stuff? I, I think I'm going to go back to the word you just said, smile. I think people, when you're walking around, when you walk into the room, no matter where you are, have a nice, approachable expression on your face. Doesn't mean you have to walk in and go, hey, you know, I'm here. Um, <laughs> here comes the cloud. Be, doesn't me, my do. <laughs> But just walk in as if you're happy with yourself and who you are as a person. Have the expression of, I'm who I am because I was made to be this way and I'm content with that and I'm going to work with that. And I think that's probably my biggest uh, recommendation is be who you are. Don't try to be who you're not. 
Well, I, th I think it's really important. Like you, you brought some really good stuff to the table today, Gloria. And again, I, uh, you inspire me with your strength and, you know, keep staying strong. We're going to make sure that that cancer doesn't change. Numbers stay the same. Uh, cause we got, we got a lot of things that we can do in the future together, you know, in North Carolina, maybe Miss Liz needs to go to North Carolina to visit Gloria. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you just never know where, your tea will take you where your direction in life will take you. Um, mm -hmm. Check out Gloria's book. So Gloria, if anybody wants to check out your books and connect with you, work with you in any doubt, uh, where can they reach you? My name, GloriaPeterson.com. And just remember that the Petersons with an S E N <laughs> and everything about me is there. So Gloria, do you have any upcoming events that you'd like to share? I have upcoming projects. I'm working on another book <laughs> and this one um, will probably come out in 225, but this one's going to be all about the grit within your grit within how to find it, how, how to discover your own grit. And I'm, I'm not sure. I want to use the word grit, but I'm kind of playing with it right now. And it'll be sharing my stories and how I discovered my, I didn't know I had it. A lot of you out there listening, you don't know you have it, but it's there. It's just you taking the time to reach in and use it to overcome whatever it is that's going on in your life so you can move forward. I like that word grit, right? It's like a good grit and gravy, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and keep looking and keep searching and all of that. So for the listeners out there, I, I, I do have a couple questions that came in, Gloria. Uh, okay. I'd like to get them out before we wrap up. We still have a couple minutes. Uh, so for your series your book series you have four books correct i have four professional development books and one personal development and each book are they easy reads are they hard reads are they exercise books what are they the four um professional development books are resource books and they are in soft cover and ebook on amazon you can get it either way the journal is a little hard to do as an ebook because you have to write in, record information. So that's soft and hardcover. And it's not only available in English. Uh, when I was a speaker in Puerto Rico last December and our reception was at the local bookstore, I noticed they had a very, very low representation of gratitude type books. And I showed him mine. And he said, well, if you do your next one in Spanish, I'll carry it. So I did. Oh, there you go. And so the next Spanish person, version for all of those with Spanish, I have a Spanish version for you. And the next question I have for you, do you speak on your personal story on stages? Oh, yes. So you, you are open for opportunities for that as oh, well, yeah. right, Gloria? Yeah, my stories have to drive a point. You know, I can't, I just don't want to dictate behavior. I don't want to dictate anything. If I haven't experienced it, then and and can follow that experience with how you can use that tool yourself because i've learned to use it that's how i prefer to teach and is there any final steps that you'd like people to know about uh professional connections i'm sorry say again our, our final steps for oh final steps you know no matter what you're doing in your life and in the society has been very very casual and laid back and um social media has changed this changed the structure of professionalism in so many different ways. Um, tap into what is really professional. Re revisit it. Revisit the word professionalism. Look it up. Revisit it. And see if you can't reincorporate that into your life if you're not there already. Because I'll tell you why. When you when it comes to biz professional presence, business etiquette protocol, anytime you know how to handle a situation correctly, because you've got the knowledge of the business etiquette. You've got the knowledge of the protocol. You've got the knowledge of the presence. It empowers you at that moment and you don't embarrass yourself. So just know it. Well, thank you for sharing that. And Gloria, how do you feel about etiquette in the corporate world? It needs to be revisited. <laughs> <laughs> it 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 has I I think um a lot of our I grew up with a grandmother who made sure I knew my social skills. And unfortunately a lot of our young people don't have that. 
because pa grandparents are busy, parents are busy, everybody's busy, busy, busy. And there's so many different ways to learn things. And there's so many bad teachings out there, if you will, bad examples out there. I think um, corporate America and in the also the educational system really needs to bring this back to reintroduce it to our young people so they can see the value. If they can see the value, what's in it for me, they will take it more seriously and they will utilize it. And as a result, we will become a better society. Well, thank you so much, Gloria. And thank you so much for the listeners and viewers out there. And thank you for your questions and uh, comments and support. Uh, without all of you guys, I could not do this. I could not have these incredible tea times and with these guests. So again, thank you, Gloria, for joining me. Thank you to the listeners, viewers. You. If you're watching a replay, please push hashtag replay and let me know where you're tuning in from because Miss Liz always likes to know where you're tuning in from. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or support that you'd like to share on this tea time, uh, be be free to reach out to Miss Liz and you can reach me on my website at www.misslizesteatime.com or my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. We will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. with uh, rescheduled tea time with Jose and he'll be sharing his story from hero, hero to villain. And then on Thursday, we have two tea times. We have uh, Susan Carlos coming in and sharing her son's story on heart transplant. Um, organs and the importance of organ transplants. Uh, and then in the evening, we have J.M. Shaw coming in and she'll be talking about her Call and Callum Walker series uh, and autism and AADHD. So we're going to be talking about a lot of incredible stuff. So you sh be sure to come in and tune in. Um, and again, share these tea times. They're there for uh, educational purposes and connection and relationships. And if you'd like to connect with any of my guests, you can just reach out to Miss Liz and Miss Liz will connect you one on one with all of my guests. So until then, I will see everybody tomorrow. Keep sharing your teas, keep staying true, and we will make a difference with one cup of tea at a time. Miss Liz Stell. Thank you for bringing me back. <laughs>